Grace to you and peace from God, our Creator, Christ, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, who guides us into all truth. We are so grateful that you've chosen to spend some time with this faith community and worship today uh, at the First United Methodist Church of Santa Barbara. Uh, we are in the season of creation now, and we do this each September. And this is the first Sunday, and it's called Forest Sunday. May God richly bless us as we look to the word of life to speak grace and truth into our lives today. I'd like to begin with a Jewish prayer that relates to creation, so would you join with me in prayer now? How wonderful, O Lord, are the works of your hands. The heavens declare your glory. The arch of the sky displays your handiwork. In your love you have given us the power to behold the beauty of your world, robed in all its splendor. The sun and the stars, the valleys and hills, the rivers and lakes all disclose your presence. The roaring breakers of the sea tell of your awesome might. The beasts of the field and the birds of the air bespeak your wondrous will. In your goodness you have made us able to hear the music of the world. The voices of loved ones reveal to us that you are in our midst. A divine voice sings through all creation. So let us join our hearts and our voices in thanksgiving and praise as we come to worship today.
Good morning, and welcome to First United Methodist Church Children's Message. This message is for children of all ages. This session we're studying about Genesis and about all the wonderful creations we have around us. And one of the creations is us. And I'd like to share a story about God's dream. This book is by Desmond Tutu. And I have someone here that's going to help me with this, with the story. God's dreams. Dear child of God, what do you dream about in your loveliest dreams? Do you dream about flying high or rainbows reaching across the sky? Do you dream about being free to do what your heart desires or being treated like a full person no matter how young you might be? Do you know what God dreams about? If you close your eyes and look with your heart, I am sure, dear child, you will find out. God dreams about people sharing. God dreams about people caring. God dreams that we reach out and hold one another's hands and play one another's games and laugh with one another's hearts. But God does not force us to be friends or to love one another. Dear child of God, it does not happen that we get angry or hurt one another. It does happen that we get angry or hurt one another. Soon we start to feel sad and so very alone. Sometimes we cry and God cries with us. But when we say we're sorry and forgive one another, we wipe away our tears and God's tears too. Each of us carries a piece of God's heart within us. And when we love one another, the piece of God's heart are made whole. God dreams that every one of us will see that we are all brothers and sisters. Yes, even you and me, even if we have different mommies or, and daddies or live in different faraway countries. Even if we speak different languages or have different ways of talking of God, even if we have different eyes and different skin. Even if you are taller and I am smaller, even if your nose is little and mine is large, dear child of God, do you know how to make God's dreams come true? It's really quite easy. As easy as sharing, loving, caring, as easy as holding, playing, laughing, as easy as knowing we are family because we are all God's children. Will you help God's dream come true? Let me tell you a secret.
God smiles like a rainbow when we do. Amen. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Creator God, you call us to love and serve you with body, mind, and spirit through loving your creation and our sisters and brothers. Open our ears to hear your word and draw us closer to you, that the whole world may be one with you as you are one with us. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our scripture reading is taken from Genesis chapter 2, verses 4b through 22. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when no plant of the field was yet in the earth, and no herb of the field had yet sprung up. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no one to till the ground. But the stream would rise from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east. And there he put the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A river flows out of Eden to water the garden, and from there it divides and becomes four branches. The name of the first is Pishon. It is the, it is the one that flows around the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. Bdellium and onyx stone are there. The name of the second river is Gihon. It is the one that flows around the whole land of Cush. The name of the third river is Tigris, which flows east of Assyria. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You may eat freely of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you will die. Then the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground, the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man so that he would call them and to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every little creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle and to the birds of the air and to every animal in the field. But for the man, there was not found a helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. 
This is the word of God for the people of God. Today's message is called Seeing the Forest and the Trees, based on Genesis 2, uh, verses 4b through 22. The familiar hymn by Maltby Babcock, called This is My Father's World, set to music the profound truth of Psalm 24, verses 1 through 2, in which we hear the psalmist's profession of faith to the Lord of all creation. The psalmist says it like this, The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. This text declaring that the earth belongs to God is a solid foundation for a theology of environmental protection and preservation. It refutes the argument that the earth and its rich resources belong to the powerful and wealthy who take and hold them, or to the rest of humanity who struggle to obtain their share of the riches. The creation of our God does not belong to the rich, who on paper at least possess it, nor does it belong to the poor, who need and want the same resources. Neither the greedy nor the needy can claim ownership. It is the Lord's by divine right. The Lord God created it, for he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. There's a Jewish prayer that includes these words. It is said, before the world was created, the Holy One kept creating worlds and destroying them. Finally, he created this one and was satisfied. He said to Adam, this is the last world I shall make. I place it in your hands. Hold it in trust. In Genesis 2, this creator God provides a lush garden that is environmentally perfect. Though there is not yet any rain, the vegetation is watered from a stream that rises from the earth. The fruit trees and the ornamental trees, which are pleasant to the sight, are watered by a great river with four tributaries. This rich garden of Eden, with its vegetation, animals, and minerals, is prepared by God to be the first home of humankind. Adam and Eve are placed in this idyllic reserve with specific instructions to till it and keep it. God's instructions seem clear. Adam, you are to preserve and protect your environment. With this action, God made humans the stewards or overseers in charge of protecting and preserving God's property. Let's think for a moment about the contributions of forests to our well-being, both physically and spiritually. Consider what you yourself know about the value of forests. Forests contribute, of course, to our economic well-being. Timber remains the material most often used in construction worldwide. Paper is still essential for communication and educational purposes even in this increasingly electronic age. For billions of people in the developing world, wood provides the main energy source for heating and cooking. Forests also serve crucial ecosystem functions. They harbor most of the world's biodiversity, sheltering more than half of the world's known plant and animal species. They protect and enrich soils and sustain water quality and quantity. And by, and by absorbing carbon dioxide and producing oxygen, they give us healthy air to breathe and reduce global warming. As it turns out, life as we know it is impossible without the world's forests. Yet there are troubling facts we need to face as we consider forests and what our biblical texts are telling us about our attitudes and behaviors in relation to them. Due to population growth and deforestation, the amount of forest 
forest cover that is available to each person has declined globally by 50% since 1960. The results of de deforestation are serious. Losing forests means losing the incredible diversity of plant and animal life they shelter. According to present trends, one quarter of the Earth's species of plants and animals will be lost in the next 40 years. A loss that will take nature 10 million years to replicate. In addition, deforestation is a, a major source or contributor to global warming, which can be argued to be the most most uh, serious environmental threat that we currently face. Tropical deforestation produces more global warming pollution than the total emission of every car, truck, plane, ship, and train on Earth. Deforestation accounts for about 20% of heat trapping emissions, an, equivalent, an amount equivalent to emissions from China or the United States. This week, of course, we watched wildfires sweep up and down the west coast, across wide swaths of, of forest lands and moving into uh, places where people live as well. More than 1,400 square miles have burned this week in Oregon, forcing an estimated half a million residents, about a tenth of that state's population, to evacuate or prepare to evacuate as of Thursday. Oregon Governor Kate Brown described the fires as a once-in-a-generation event that is potentially the greatest loss of human life and property due to wildfires in the state's history. In California, 28 major wildfires were burning Friday, including the state's largest on record. And five of the 12 largest wildfires in California's history are burning right now as we speak. Wildfires, wildfire experts say they have never seen so many large and rapidly growing wildfires in so many places simultaneously. Many were so severe that they manufactured their own weather events including lightning arc arcing out of the ashen-laden sky. There's little doubt that human-caused climate change is driving fire risks in the West to new heights, enabling more fires to behave in extreme, unpredictable ways. Warming temperatures made these fires worse by drying out vegetation during a record-shattering heat wave. For many of the, us, these dramatic realities confirm that the Earth's climate is changing, causing more extreme weather events and posing more serious dangers to those who are least able to relocate and posing uh, or to mitigate the effects. There's a solid scientific consensus indicating that we are witnessing a disturbing warming trend in the Earth's climate. This warming is accompanied by a rise in the sea level, which affects millions of people that live near bodies of water. Scientific studies have also indicated that most global warming is due to concentration of greenhouse gases, released mainly as a result of human activity. In his 2015 encyclical titled Laudato Si, Pope Francis called upon human beings to recognize the need for changes of lifestyles, production, and consumption in order to combat this warming, or at least the human causes which produce or aggravate it. And so it is important for us to look at our own activities, our own lives, and how they contribute to the environmental crises we now face. And by the way, these environmental crises are not unrelated to the global pandemic, pandemic that threatens our health or the racial justice concerns that plague our society. When you delve a little deeper and look more holistically at 
systemic issues like inequities in access to health care and subsequent health outcomes, and generational sins of racism, sexism, classism, and heterosexism, you quickly find ecological connections related to air and water quality, access to healthy food supplies, and general quality of life. Pope Francis called the Earth's climate a common good, belonging to all and meant for all. And our, I would argue that this point of view is more biblical than the ways we have traditionally interpreted scripture. Biblical scholars, theologians, and preachers have traditionally focused primarily on God and humanity in isolation from the world of nature in which the divine human drama is played out. This traditional way of reading these texts as if they focused on God and humans alone missed many aspects that we're now beginning to see and understand as essential in this biblical drama. If we don't begin to read the Bible with a better understanding of the foundational role of nature in biblical religion, we will be missing the fuller sense of who God is and who we are meant to be in the world. Most of us know down deep that a core aspect of our spirituality and our wholeness is nourished by our connection to the world around us. Many of us have experienced this connection in the presence of nature's magnificent forests and trees, whether it be hiking through old growth forests or, or simply admiring the age and beauty of trees in our own neighborhoods. And so we circle back to our human vocation given by God in relation to forests and trees. The first mission God gives humans before God gives them the commands to love God and their neighbors is to care for the world's plants. God put the first human in the garden to farm it and to take care of it. Or as the New Revised Standard Version says it, to till it and keep it. And so the original and most fundamental human work is to care for the world's plants. And it's possible to be even more precise based on this biblical phrasing. The terms farm and till actually translate the Hebrew verb avad, which literally means serve. And it is the common Hebrew term used to describe the service of servants to their masters, subjects to their kings, people to their God. In other words, the Yahwist, who is writing this second chapter of Genesis, viewed humanity as creation's servant and caretaker, not its master. That's a good place to leave it for now. A reminder of our place within creation from a biblical point of view. Individually, of course, we cannot save the, the earth. We cannot save the planet on our own. However, if we start focusing on a piece of the earth, namely our home place or region, we can get a handle on what it means to truly love this earth as God's creation. As we come to know how our own places work and what makes them healthy or unhealthy, whole or broken, we will open a window into understanding and learning how to care for the wider world. And with each community doing its part, the pieces will add up to a much larger whole. So I invite you to pray with me now. God of creation, the earth is yours. With all of its beauty and goodness, its rich and overflowing provision. But we have claimed it for our own, plundered its beauty for profit, grabbed its resources for ourselves. God of creation, forgive us. May we no longer abuse your trust, but care gently and with justice for your earth. 
For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're blessed to gather beneath the graceful boughs of this beautiful redwood, deep-rooted, storm-strengthened, and free. Join me now as we walk with Jesus through forests of prayer. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks that you welcome us into your forest home of prayer, an opening and entering through the thickets of life, a passageway within. We pick our way past the dead wood of the pressures, snags, and negatives down the winding path beneath your forest canopy into your holy presence. We wander through woods and forest glades to hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees, to walk with your son, not sparing, who died upon the tree. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. God, we join the forest trees to celebrate the blessed gifts of woodland, the lungs of the earth, roots enriching soil, food for the hungry, purifying the rain, layers of plant life beneath its limbs, a diverse home for insects, birds, wildlife, all nature's praise of sights, sounds, smells, taste, and touch. We give our thanks and praise. Jesus, our trees and forests are hurting. The equilibrium and sacredness of the garden is disrupted. Swaths of rainforest decimated, irreversible damage to virgin forests, woods reduced to profit commodity, timber clear-cut, transported and sold. Species driven to extinction, the ravages of climate change, including fires, scourge beyond the forest's natural life cycle. The harm we have done, Lord, have mercy. We pray for the shelter of your grace when barriers and obstacles litter the way. We pray for the gift of comfort to overcome pain, forgiveness for selfish steps that stumble, guidance when we stray and lose our way, peace when violence has claimed the fallen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for seedlings planted to heal the damage, to restore the biodiversity and ecosystems lost, the gift of new sprouts, signs of hope and despair, for Sabbath rest, relief from vicious cycles, for an end to unrestrained exploitation. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus Christ, tree of life, we take our rest in thee, swinging free in the bower of your care, surprised by the Spirit's updraft, refreshed by nature's splendor and song, awaken us from dull slumber to know every rock and tree and creature has a life, has a spirit, has a name. Grounded and freed, move us to get up, to get moving, to answer your call to tend and care, cultivate and preserve, as guardians of the forest garden to grow and sustain the creation's body and the soul. And then bring us home to the tree of life, to you, to reset our nervous systems so we can give unhurried attention to each other, to nurture the connection between our inner life of prayer and our call to serve community in all creation, with whom we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
We come now to the time in our service where we bring our offerings to God. God is unfailing in blessing and love. So let us, with thankful hearts, offer up to God a portion of what God has given to us. We thank every one of you for remembering to send your gifts to uh, either do so in the mail or online to support the ongoing work of the church as we seek to be a blessing to this community and a guiding light for those who are seeking to know Christ. Will you pray with me, please? Oh God, we thank you for the gifts that have been given. Multiply them and enable the work of love and the righteousness of your kingdom in the world. We thank and praise you. Amen. Now receive this charge and blessing. Go in peace. Practice forgiveness. Live the gospel. In the name of Jesus, our Lord. The blessing of the Creator be with you. The love of Jesus fill you. And the power of the Holy Spirit sustain you. Now and forever. Amen. <laughs>